Hello, welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries, where today I'm talking all about the breather in the crankcase. This is the crankcase, this is the drive side, and we need to fit a breather so it doesn't get pressurized with a one-way valve so that the whole thing becomes negative compared to atmospheric pressure, so it gives the drive shaft seal in here a fighting chance of keeping the oil inside the engine. So what we planned to do was to make a hole around about here to fit a breather, and then that breather would have a one-way valve and vent either to the oil tank most likely or perhaps to the atmosphere but there's a bit of consideration has gone on since then because although with the crankcase in the engine lent slightly forward so as you were looking at this particular case here the front of the bike would be that way the engine would be leaning forward slightly I think we might actually fit it in this position rather than this position because if I teleport to the bike I'll show you why <clears throat> the bike here it is and as you can see I found a use for the short stand for the old pillar drill on the bike itself although the engine is leaning forward there isn't really much height difference between here and here there's perhaps maybe an inch total and if I'm going to run a hose from here to the oil tank, which will be at the front of the bike for the breather, I think it's nicer to have a shorter run for the hose from there to the oil tank. And I haven't got to bring a hose over the top of this rib here. And I think that'll be a nicer place. I'm going to locate the breather in this side of the this side of the rib rather than that side of the rib. So if I go back to the shed, I'll show you the one way valve and what the plan is there. The shed, right, back to the shed. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that this is from an old uh, bike that uh, Bob's made, and so is this, and it's the most horrendous looking hose pipe I've ever seen in my life. So that's definitely going in the bin. We'll have some nice Goodrich hose, thank you very much. This is this is quite well made. This again is off another engine that, that Bob's built in the past uh, that incorporated this one-way valve here, and that went with a hose over the top and a couple of Jubilee clamps, and it worked really well, but it, uh, I have to say it's not the most attractive thing, and my preference would be to drill and tap into here to make something in bronze or brass that screws in to the engine case with an external thread that I can screw on a pre-made fitting from something like a Goodrich hose with a, a 90 degree bending and fit this inside the brass part. This is the one way valve. So let's go over to the bench and have a look at the drawings for this and I'll pull it apart and show you what's in there. The bench. God, that was a lazy teleport, wasn't it? I teleported myself from there all the way over to here, but it saves walking, doesn't it? So this is a drawing of the pressure relief valve. So this pipe here is the fitting that I showed you that I was perhaps a little bit derogatory about the, the way that it uh, appears. Um, and then this shoulders in, this this is the one-way valve. So the, the one-way valve has got a little shoulder in there, which you can see there. So it pushes into the pipe. And then inside there's a thin aluminium piece here. This aluminium piece moves from there to there. That's the limit of the movement. And these kind of sections here, around the outside of this, uh, this is a disc, they're all circular parts. Um, around the outside, you've got holes that are uh, mill, mill ends that have come in from the side, six of those, so that when the air flows in this direction, it lifts that moves the whole thing in this direction here and allows air to pass through the holes and out. But when air flows in this direction, it pushes the aluminium piece back onto this shoulder here, and that stops the air from flowing any further. So it, it acts as a one-way valve. It doesn't have to be 100% efficient, as long as overall the crankcases end up below atmospheric pressure, that's the main thing. Now it's easy to visualize in the valve itself. You can see the thin aluminium part in there, and you can see the holes that I was talking about. If I take the top hat off, you can see inside the actual part itself, and that moves forwards and backwards as the um, as the air flows in and out. So I'll just pop that out. There it is, and you can see that's the piece that moves backwards and forwards. That's the housing that it sits in. So when when it is all the way at this end, no air can pass in that direction. But as it's off the seat air can come around the outside through those holes and up in this direction. I hope, hopefully that's clear. 
uh, apologies if it's not very clear but that's how the one-way valve works and this is one uh, this is a blue peter because it's one that we made earlier but uh, what i intend to do is probably to refabricate one because i'm not too keen about cannibalizing things that are already working to make the next thing um what we've getting a little, little bit a little bit older it's ever so easy to forget what you've done what you've removed and then later on if you want to recommission something um it makes it that bit harder doesn't it so i'll probably remake that assembly as well uh, possibly incorporate the valve into the threaded component but that's the plan it's another little thing on the list of jobs but as you can see they are getting crossed off and crossed off and crossed off other things i've done today is to collect that oil tank there i say oil tank it's actually an oil it's actually an air tank off air suspension of a tesla electric car but the intention is to use that in front of the down tube to make the oil tank but more of that later as usual thank you for watching more updates will follow